Here we have solving a rational equation that simplifies to a linear denominator ax and bx. So we're going to do the same thing as we've been doing. Um, we got to find the LCD. And that means we need the common factors times the distinct factors. So denominator 1 is 2w, denominator 2 is 3w, and denominator 3 is just a 1. So LCD, um, they really don't have anything in common. So actually, these two have a W in common. So we're going to include W in the common factors. So these are spoken for with that W written once. Now the distinct factors would be all of those numbers, 2, 3, and 1. And so then when I multiply all of that together, I end up with 6W. So my LCD is going to be 6W. So I'm going to take this fraction and multiply it by 6W over 1. Multiply this fraction by 6W over 1. And multiply this fraction by 6W over 1. So then here the W's will cancel and 2 will go into 6 three times. Here the W's will cancel. 3 will go into 6 two times, and here nothing will count, so we leave that one alone. What am I left with? 5 times 3 on the top, and then a 1 at the bottom, so I don't need to write that. That's a whole number. Here I end up with 7 times 2, which is 14 on the top, and a 1 at the bottom. I don't need to write. Here I end up with 6w over 1. Again, don't need to write the denominator 1. So how do I solve this resulting equation? First, we combine these like terms. Then we divide both sides by 6. And we get that 1, 6 equals W. So this is the potential solution. We need to verify whether it is an actual solution by making sure that it doesn't make any of our denominators 0. So if I plug 2 times 1, 6, I do not get 0. 3 times 1, 6 is also not 0, and 1 is not 0 either. So none of the denominators will become 0 when plugging in this value. That means that my potential solution is an actual solution. So now we have this example here. So denominator 1 is a 6y, denominator 2 is a 10, denominator 3 is a y. Now, when finding the common and distinct factors, it's very important that your numbers, as big or as small as they are, if they're not prime, they need to be written in their prime factorization forms. So this one actually needs to be written as 2 times 3 and then the y. You can put the dot in the middle if you want to. It's a choice. 10 can be written as 2 times 5. And then y is just y, right? But you need to make sure that you're looking at these values in their prime factorizations, okay? And as those denominators get increasingly uh, more complicated, you still need to have them in their prime factorizations, okay? So then that means my LCD is going to be what they have in common. I see that these two have a, a 2 in common, so those are out of the picture. These two have a y in common, so that's now out of the picture. And then do I have any distinct factors? I do. I have the 3 and then I have the 5 that are distinct from the other denominators. So what do I get when I multiply all of that together? I end up getting 30y. So then I'm going to take y minus 2 over 6y times 30y over 1 minus 1 over 10 times 30y over 1 equal to 1 over y times 30y over 1. And so we reduce. The y's will cancel. 6 goes into 35 times. 10 goes into 33 times. The y is still there. The y cancels here and that's it. So what do we have left? Um, this this one's a little bit weird. I have 5 times this entire numerator. So make sure you put your entire numerator in 
parentheses and then tell yourself you're going to multiply it by five now typically we don't write things like this we usually write them like that i mean it's not wrong to distribute from the right but normally we like those constant coefficients in the front here you have one times three y which is three y i'll bring that down and here you have one times 30 which is 30. And because the only thing we have in the denominators are one, we don't have to write them as fractions. So if I distribute this five, I get five y minus 10 minus three y equal to 30. If I combine my like terms, I end up with two y minus 10 equal to 30. If I add 10 to both sides, I end up with two y equal to 40. And then if I take that equation, 2y equal to 40, and I divide both sides by 2, I end up with y equal to 20. And so again, this is a potential solution. Let's make sure it doesn't make any of the denominators 0. 6 times 20 is not 0. 10 by itself is not 0. And then if I plug in 20, 20 is not 0. So this potential solution is an actual solution.